We're replacing a well pressure tank today. It's a project we've never tackled before. This uh, pressure tank was replaced uh, about 15 years ago. Uh, it has developed a ruptured bladder, uh, which causes a sound like the water, well, because it is, the water uh, passing the bladder and squirting on the side of the steel tank. So we have to replace it today. And we're going to go through that process. Um, and I'll try to step you through it as we go. I'll even let you know whether we're successful or not. Um, if not, we'll have to call a pro to come and finish it up, but I think we're going to be all right. I got my lovely wife with me, which is going to be my helper, my camera woman, my tool getter, my, uh, my, my bleep sounder. Uh, no, we'll probably have to do that actually on, on post-edit to bleep out the, the kind words that I'm sure I'm going to be saying. Mm -hmm. um, so, but anyway, we're going to get started. Uh, today is March... <clears throat> Third. Third, 2019, and we're going to replace a bladder tank for I'll the. Uh, guaranteed, there'll be some bloopers. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. So, all right, stay with us. You want to check and make sure that there's no power to your switch. So we currently still have power. We go turn off the breaker to the well pump. After turning off your breaker, verify that you have no power. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the, the, the electrical wires from the switch. Now that we've confirmed we have no power, going to the switch. The two outside terminals are the power in. Outside terminals are power in. The two innermost terminals are load out to the motor. It's on a two wire system. I understand there's a three wire system, but I don't have that, so I'm not concerned about it. Okay, as I mentioned, there was no drain valve on this particular setup uh, when we put the new one in, we're going to put a drain valve in. But since there is no drain valve, we had to open up the faucets in the house to drain the pressure off the tank. Now, that... Well, it sounds like it's draining off. Uh, but just to make sure, since we don't have a drain valve, I'm going to pressurize the tank a little bit with a... Uh, with a, uh, an air pump to try to make sure that we've got as much air or much water out of the tank as possible. I'm using a Ryobi air pump and we're going to pump this and see if we can push more water out of the tank. Okay, so we have our 20 gallon tank. It's pre-pressurized to 38 PSI. We have a 40 slash 60 switch, which means it will kick on the pump at 40 PSI and kick off the pump at 60 PSI. The PSI in the tank needs to be two pounds less than the switch, and it is. The switch is 40, the PSI in the tank is 38. We're getting ready to assemble the tank now. Um, 
We'll step through it. This is the T that's going to fit into the bottom of the tank. It's got uh, two quarter inch connections for the uh, pressure gauge and for the switch, and it's got two half inch connections for a, a drain valve and a relief valve. First thing you want to do is you want to check and make sure that it's going to fit into your tank. So we'll put in a kind of a dry test here. And it's going to fit. Next we apply plumber's tape, thread tape, to the threads that are going to go into the connector. The way you apply thread tape is you want to put it on in the direction opposite that the pipe will thread in. If it's going to go, if it threads in this direction, counterclockwise, we're going to apply tape in a clockwise rotation to apply the thread tape. Just lay it on, second thread back, hold it with your thumb or your finger, and wrap the tape. Pulling it snugly, but not snug enough to tear it off. When you have a layer on there, two, snap it off. Smooth it down. Now we have thread tape applied. Once your thread tape is applied, simply thread your pipe into your receiver. Till it gets snug. And then you'll have to turn it around, continue to turn it until your pipe fittings are <sighs> straight up. This is obviously viewed from the bottom side of the tank, but the fittings are going to be straight up when we turn the tank right side up. Okay, we've got our teeth threaded in facing the right direction. We have the pipe tape on the, on the threads in the back and it's really cranked it in there so it's secure. Now we're going to add the a pressure gauge, the, the drain valve, the pop-off valve or the pressure release, and the switch. Well it appears that the tank is drained as much as it's going to drain now and uh, to minimize water on the floor when we cut these pipes we got little potty pads uh, for dogs because we have a dog and this just happened to be conveniently available. We're going to remove the switch and stem so we can use the uh, stem for the new switch. good sign is that there's no water coming through here so our tanks pretty much very well drained okay I was going to originally use the same piece of uh, galvanized quarter inch by four inch piping but as you can see it came out pretty grody so went and got another one um, I've already taped it all up and I'm going to put it together with the switch into the T Start by threading it into the T in the top one of the quarter inch sockets. Doesn't matter really which one. I'm just putting it there because that happened to be the one that was in the first time. And this is our switch, our new switch. Set that on top. Screw it on there. You see that the nipple is turning, threading down into the T. Now we have the switch on. Now we're going to attach a new pressure uh, gauge on there. There's a pressure gauge on the old one. It probably works just as well, but since I'm replacing parts, I may as well replace new parts. As you can see, I've already got it all taped up.
thread it in nice and snug. There we go. Okay. My old setup does not have a drain valve. So we're going to go ahead and put a quarter turn drain valve into this one. It's a half inch connection. As you see, I've already got it taped up. It has a water hose connector on it for connecting to discharge the tank. That's open, that's closed. The other thing my original setup didn't have was a pressure relief valve. This is designed to pop open in the event that the pressure in the tank gets 75 PSI or greater. It actually says it right on here, it says set at 75 PSI. Can you, I don't know whether you can actually read that or not. And as, again, you can see that I've already got it threaded, taped up on the threads. We put it in this entrance, this uh, connecting point here. In the event that this reaches over 75 PSI, this will pop open and flood the, flood the floor. Or well, There's actually a connector here that we will at some point run a, uh, a drain tube to so it goes to, to a drain. So that's about it for putting together the tank assembly, the T-assembly, um, for all the essential pieces. Now we're going to work on disconnecting the old tank. Uh, as you can see, this is kind of grungy in here. Get this, out, this electrical out of the way. So I need to uh, kind of clean up this pipe, this PVC pipe that I'm going to be cutting here in a little bit. So we'll have good, uh, good surface to glue on. So I just got some sandpaper. I'm doing it while it's on the tank to give myself some stability on here. And that is Schedule 40 PVC pipe. Over here we have half inch copper pipe that I'll be cutting here in a minute with a cutter. So, I'll get the cutting tools and begin. Use a little rigid mini cutter I'm going to cut the uh, copper tubing with. I'm going to get as close to this as I can with the original valve where it was sweated in. Just kind of clamp that on, give it a turn, and rotate it around. This is actually a close quarters cutter, which is one that I happen to have around anyway. Make it around, get a little twist to tighten it up a little bit more. Rotate it around some more. Tighten it up, turn it again, and our pipe is cut. For the PVC pipe, I'm going to be using a ratcheting cutter. Um, to use one of these, you open it up all the way, and it'll snap like that. And then you place your pipe into here, and you start squeezing, ratcheting one tooth at a time. Now 
until your pipe is cut through. So we'll see how well this works. Never used one of these before. We'll see how well it works. Well, that cut it off. Open it up nice and smooth. Now, the tank is free for us to, to, to take out. Now we're ready to remove the tank. Fortunately, it's not waterlogged, it's all empty. Take it, pick up the old tank and take it out. To clean off the little half inch copper tubing, we're gonna use this little device. It's a, just a, it's got a bunch of little Little steel brushes in there that will hopefully go on that pipe and twist a time or two and clean off the copper. And there we go, clean copper. Okay, this needs to go onto my PVC pipe so it can thread into my brass T. I don't know exactly how deep this goes in here. So what I'm gonna to do to measure it is I'm gonna set it on here, kinda of do a dry fit. Mark it with a Sharpie. Take this off. Measure this, and I have a depth of three quarters of an inch before it bottoms out into that. What that means to me is, since I'm working with real tight spaces, I'm gonna need just a little more than three quarters of an inch here. I'll probably cut this off at an inch. That'll give me a quarter inch additional that I could get into there with. So I will mark this at an inch. And that's where I'm going to cut my pipe off. Okay, I want to give you an idea of how this is going to look once I get it set up into place. I actually have, this is going to glue on to piece of pipe that you saw sticking up out of the floor and it will screw into this. This is a union that that will screw into. This is attached to a three-quarter inch brass nipple and this is a three-quarter inch brass nipple. That'll, com that'll complete the supply side of our, of our setup. Over here, I have a three-quarter to one-half inch shark bite to go onto the little copper pipe. I have a quarter turn shutoff valve, which will replace the, the, the screw type that I have. I have the three-quarter nipple here that will, that will complete that. When I get ready to put this tank in, I'll have all those taped together, uh, taped and assembled. I'll have this onto my pipe, I'll have the union connection, and I'll set the tank into place and then put everything together. Once that's done, I'll hook up my electrical, power in, load out, ground, Make sure that our valves are, are, are closed. We'll flip on the breaker and we'll see what happens on the pressure side. Okay, so I'm using Oatly Handy Pack. It's a little under $9. It comes with both the primer and the cement for use uh, for putting together PVC pipe. 
I would strongly recommend that you go out and watch a video on YouTube on how this works. Of course, I'm going to do it too, but you're welcome to watch a, a professional do it. Basic idea is make sure your fittings are clean. You put this purple primer around the outside of the pipe and the inside of the fitting. Then you go, uh, while it's still damp, you go with glue, cement, around the outside of the, the um, pipe and the inside of the fitting. Uh, make sure you get it all completely coated and then you put your fitting on, making sure it bottoms out. Let it sit for 30 seconds or so while you're holding it and then it has a cure time. So there's a video for it out there, many videos out there. Go out and take a look uh, and get some information on how to use the primer and the, and the cement. So now we're going to try to glue, ba to glue my uh, adapter onto this PVC pipe. So we're going to use purple primer, <clears throat> and I'm going to use regular clear PVC cement. Okay, and Shirley is going to read the instructions off the box while I do this. Square pipe ends. Chamfer and remove all dirt. Okay. Apply purple primer to pipe and fitting. Apply solvent cement oh, to. Oh, hang on. I'm just at the purple. Oh, okay. Purple Sorry. primer part right now. Okay. Purple primer all the way around it. Purple primer. Purple primer. It's purple. It is purple. Purple primer. Okay. We got the purple primer. Now what do we do? Apply solvent cement to the pipe and fitting. Solvent cement to the pipe and fitting. Yeah, am I, is my head in the way? No, you're fine. Okay. Getting all the way around, making sure it's plenty all the way around. Okay. Okay. Then assemble joint with a quarter turn motion and hold for 30 seconds. Oh, that was so, went on there so slick. So now we're going to hold for about 30 seconds. It's bottomed out. I can feel it. I'm pushing pressure against it. It's bottomed out. All right. Close this up. Okay, while there is uh, there's some cure time on that PVC assembly, so we're going to we're going to uh, tape on the union. Just making sure that it goes under nice and snug, but not so much that we want to break it. going to put this part of the union on. Snug that down. Again, not so much that we want to break it, but enough to make it snug.
that slips like that. So we've got this plane here that we can work with. All right. And we'll do the other side the same. We will put this tape on clockwise. You don't want to get tape down into the joint, into, into the pipe, you can keep from it. Alright, so now we'll thread this into here. And we will tighten it up a bit. put on our valve Put it in place. connector here, PVC connection. We're going to take our other half of the union and screw it onto there. There's an O-ring inside this union that you want to make sure stays in it when you put everything together, okay? Okay, looks like we're good there. Okay, so I've got my tank sitting in here. And as you can see, my union is kind of tight here, so I'm going to go ahead and do it before I do the, the other copper pipe. Am I in your way? No. Just put those together like that. Snug it up good, and that connection's there. Go over to our shark bite. And put it in place. And that connection's there. Now we do the wiring. Okay, so we're getting ready to hook up power. This is power in, power in, load out, load out, ground. So we'll hook up the, the, the load out first because that just happens to be where I'm going. I don't think there's any real hard, fast rule to it.
There may be, and if there is, I don't know. Put the incoming power on the other side, or the power on the other side. All right, so we got that in. Let's see how this works out. We'll hook up the ground here real quick. Okay, the ground's in. Okay. Whew. Mercy me. Got that done. All right. Lid. Okay. It's time for the moment of truth. I'm going to go flip the switch. We'll see. If we got water. I have flipped the breaker. I hear it filling. Let's look at the gauge. Okay, here, I'll let you. Well, folks, I think we did it. We'll see how it turns out. I, we, we had a few leaks around the drain valve and the pressure relief valve uh, because I hadn't quite tightened those up enough, but I tightened them up and they're fine. Uh, the pump's cycling like it should. We're getting water like we should. So I think we're good. So if I can do it, she can do it, we can do it, you might be able to do it too. So um, don't know whether this video was a help or not. If not, you haven't lost anything. If it was, you've hopefully gain some knowledge at our expense. Um, but we had a good time and we enjoyed the project. So on top of that, we saved quite a bit of money. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, and we'll see what happens uh, if we have another project going on. Bye. Bye. Okay, today is March 3rd, 2019, Saturday. That's wrong. Saturday, March 3rd, one more time. Saturday, March 3rd, 2019, mm -hmm. Sunday. Nope. Crap. 
Hold on, I have to look at my... What'd I say? Saturday. No, Thursday. no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday, March 3rd, 2019. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, through this whole project, I never would have thought that my problem would be with the electrical. Okay, where did that screw go? Oh, lost my screw. Found my screw. Shit. 